I think what's really great about Primary Math 2022 is there is a lesson structure that allows you to spend time with your student, but then also encourage independence every single day. Hi, I'm Gina, one of the curriculum consultants for Rainbow Resource Center. Today, we welcome Jessica Kaminsky to answer a few questions about Primary Math 2022, the newest edition of Singapore Primary Math. Let me do a quick introduction. First and foremost, Jessica is a homeschool mother to three children. Jessica has been an educator for over 16 years and is the author of Singapore Math's 2022 grades two through five teacher guides and is also the author of the Primary Math 2022 Home Instructor Guides for grades two through five. Jessica has a library of homeschool videos for parents to purchase through her website, Math With Purpose. These engaging videos done by Jessica are helpful for both parents and students when using Primary Math 2022. And we are very happy to have you here with us to answer a few questions about Singapore Math. So let's just get started here. Um, there's a few editions of primary math available, and a lot of parents ask, how is primary math 2022 different from the other editions? Can you help us out with that? Yes, that's a great question. So primary math 2022 is a completely redesigned series from its original authors. And what they've done is they've created a whole new curriculum that reflects Singapore's latest syllabus. So this is to counteract what we know our students are doing currently based off of research. So you're going to find mm -hmm. some concepts have been moved a little bit um, because they found, you know, students needed more time or we wanted to develop those a little bit further. But also our students have changed and they need different skills than what they had, you know, 15 years ago. Yeah. So you're going to find 21st century skills in the text, including STEAM opportunities, heuristics, um, lots of opportunities for students to really show how to be a critical thinker in today's age, because that's what we're aiming to provide for them in this newest series. So we seem to get a lot of questions from parents with multiple students wondering how they're gonna teach multiple children with different grade levels. Can you speak to this and give some parents advice, especially those using Primary Math 2022? So as a mom of three, very different kids, I totally understand this and I'm homeschooling mine and I get it. your day is busy and you got a lot going on. So totally understand that. I think what's really great about Primary Math 2022 is there is a lesson structure that allows you to spend time with your student, but then also encourage independence mm -hmm. every single day. So there's a way for us to begin working with our students and then they're working independently. But I do honor the fact that homeschooling has to look different because mm. homeschooling is different. So I'm going to pull this up and share this really quickly. Um, one of the things that I have done as one of the authors and um, just keeping in mind my Singapore math background is I've created the only homeschool model for Singapore math teaching at home. I'm um, called the 4C math mastery method. And what I've done is I've used the materials that Singapore has provided us that are research based and I've streamlined them in a way that you can teach multiple students in just 20 minutes a day. And so we're going to connect, we're going to communicate, we're going to collaborate, and we're going to comprehend with our students. And what this does is this is going to help our kids to work with us and then move on. And so what I actually do is I begin teaching with my most independent student and then get him started. And then he starts working independently and I move on to my next student. And it's a way for us to just work really fast through our lessons, but also to get the most out of it. Uh, as part of the Math with Purpose video library, there is a course that walks people through this, including videos of me teaching my own children. So you can see how how interesting that is. Um, but you can find out more, including a free workbook that you can download to kind of walk you through this um, at mathwithpurpose.com slash 4C homeschool. That's great. Thank you for that. Uh, so Primary Math 2022 is formatted a little bit differently than the previous editions, as you talked about. Um, so the components, there's a student book, there's additional practice, there's Mastering Beyond and assessments. And often we get the question from parents, do I really need all of these components to teach this curriculum effectively? 
do you think they need all of it? Well, one of the great things about having a lot of resources is having a lot of resources, but then you also have to decide how you're going to use those resources. Mm -hmm. So what I tend to tell parents is you're going to start with your kind of non-negotiables and then you're going to move on. And one of the great things about primary math is there is a great price point on those. So again, if you're like me teaching multiple kids and that budget matters and really deciding what elements we're going to need. So I'm going to show here quickly. I have um, just a quick little image to help you kind of decide that. So they're going to tell us that our core components are the consumable student book A and B. So we definitely are going to need to have those for each student. And then you're going to have your teacher resource, which we're going to talk about a little more later, like the teacher's guide or the home instructor's guide. So from there, this is where you kind of have to make a decision. They have two different options for student practice. In the student book, there is a little section of independent practice at the end of every lesson, but you may find that you want just a little more of that independent practice. So mm -hmm. the additional practice workbook, um, again, it's A and B. It's for every single lesson. So if my student finishes and I feel like he's doing great, I'm going to say head on over to additional practice and, and do a few more problems. Whereas mastery and beyond is going to, they call it distributed practice, but basically it's cumulative practice. So if my student is doing, you know, five days of addition with regrouping, whereas the additional practice has a practice every single day, mastery and beyond would combine all those skills and have one practice at the end of that skill. So you kind of have to make a decision what works best for you. I will tell you the mastery and beyond is in color and the additional practice is black and white. That might be a point for some people. But I, I typically tell parents choose one or the other. Um, doing both would be a lot of practice. Um, but they are both going to give you that on-level practice. Keep in mind, um, there's another option as well. When you go and you have your home instructor's guide or your teacher's guide, you do get online access to EduHub for one year. And within that online access, there is a piece called reteach or extension. So not only do you have your daily practice, but now you've got to make a decision as to how to meet the needs of your learner. And what this does is for every single lesson, if your student needs just a little bit more support, you can go online to EduHub and you'll find your lesson and print a PDF of a reteach activity, which is going to have more examples, more resources, that type of thing to really just scaffold your student to get there. Whereas on the other end of that, if your student is just flying through this lesson and really needs a challenge, you can also go and print for every single lesson extension, which is going to be that challenge. Um, I will say the goal is to have fewer problems that are really going to challenge your students. So you have to be intentional about what type of practice you want. Mm -hmm. You don't have to do all the things, you know, but choosing the ones that make sense for your student. And also keep in mind, you know, one chapter, you may be relying heavily on reteach and then another chapter additional practice works just fine um, because it totally depends on how your student is doing through each of these pieces. Um, I did also want to tell you um, online as well, you get that transition guide piece, which will help you to transition your student if they're struggling. And that's something that's also going to be printable that you can access. Now, the other question about the assessment guide, this is totally a personal choice in how you want to use assessment for your student. In the student book, there is a chapter review at the end of every chapter in grades one and up that could be used as an assessment. It's more of a review type assessment, meaning that there's questions that look more similar to what you've seen in the book. Whereas the assessment guide is going to combine skills and really test application. Like, can your student apply these skills? They use web depth of knowledge and each question kind of just combines skills and challenges students to really show what they know. And there's also cumulative assessments, mid-year and end-of-year assessments. 
So I advise parents to consider, you know, what are you assessing? What kind of information do you need? What does your state require? Maybe do you want to have portfolio pieces? Because this is a more formal type assessment. Mm -hmm. So again, I think it would depend on what is needed in your homeschool setting. That is wonderful. Thank you so much for explaining that. Because with so many components, sometimes new homeschoolers especially think, oh, I need to get all of these and I need to use them all. And it can be <laughs> overwhelming. So I appreciate the explanation of that. And also with the performance task and the STEAM activities, can they be used as assessments as well? If the state doesn't require a formal assessment, what are your thoughts on that? The performance task is a great assessment. Um, it's part of that mastery component mm -hmm. in their lesson cycle. And so the performance task is going to see real life skills and application. The STEAM activity is more of like a project based thing. And because okay. they carry over several chapters, it may not give you the assessment data that you're looking for, but it's still that mastery piece to ensure that your student can apply. Right. Okay, very good. Okay, so for the parent, there's also two different uh, components available, the home instructor guide and the teacher guide. And sometimes parents have a hard time choosing between the two. Can you give us the main differences between those? Sure. I, I would say that each book totally depends on your teaching style and what you, you know, want to use with your students. We'll start with the teacher's guide. Okay. It is a color spiral bound book. Um, and it's going to teach to a classroom and it's going to talk to you like you are an educator. And so you're going to find differentiation support such as additional support. You're going to find extension, English language learner support, things like that. Um, there's even a component about a small group lesson at the end that can be used. A homeschool parent can totally utilize all those things. Again, I think it just depends on your teaching style. The Home Instructor's Guide is a little bit different. Um, it's going to teach to one student. So it's going to give you suggestions on the group games. It's going to give you suggestions on ways that you can practice throughout your day through real life tasks, you know, grocery shopping or planning lunch, you know, those types of things. Because all of the Home Instructor's Guides were written by Singapore math experts who also homeschool. So we got together and really thought about those pieces that are important to us and what we would want to know as a homeschool parent. And so you just kind of have to gauge which one of these fit your personality and your teaching style in order to choose the best one. That's so reassuring knowing that actual homeschool moms that have used this and, and know the product have uh, implemented those resources into the home instructor guide. And, and really, yeah, it is a personal choice between, yeah, thank you for that. Um, and lastly, some homeschoolers have the idea that primary math is just for students who excel at math. But it really sounds like it'd be a good fit for all the students struggling average or students who are above average as you had brought in that reteach and extension activities online. Um, so it's that's what I gather from this. How would you answer that? You know, I've been really fortunate um, working as a consultant. I've been able to teach students all over the world. And I have watched this program especially work for all different types of learners because of the way that it's set up. Um, and also having three very different kids. I have gifted to dyslexia. You know, we have all sorts of, we have a mixed bag in our house. And so I've been able to watch the same skills be taught and to meet the needs of each learner. Primary Math 2022 includes a lot of components to help this ch student who is struggling and the student who is more advanced and just the student who's right there in the middle. Mm. They do that with the chapter um, recall at the beginning of every single chapter. As I mentioned before, there's a whole section dedicated in grades one and up to help your student be successful because you're assessing, do you have the skills needed? And if they don't, you go online to that edge you have, you go to the transition guide, and you can print off materials from previous grade levels to help your students. So you're already walking into your chapter with success. The second thing they do is in every single lesson, I mentioned the lesson structure is so well thought out and that opening problem 
allows your student to take it where he or she wants to go. You know, you can use manipulatives, you can use algorithms, you can try a new strategy, you know, you can try lots of things. And then every problem after that is going to get more challenging and builds. And so for my gifted learner, we go, you know, we just take it and we go. For my student who struggles, we use the manipulatives and the visuals and he can still access those really challenging problems just with the support and the visuals that he needs. And then every lesson is going to include that practice that again, gets more challenging because we have the think problems, which are going to really support students at a higher level by giving them like a novel question they haven't seen before. And then you have those reteach and extension. So again, you have to know your student and you have to know how to best utilize those materials because they're there and it's just, you know, deciding how to use them and just getting used to choosing which one to use. But every single activity is purposeful and thoughtful. And I have watched students who people say, oh, Singapore math is so hard for them. You know, they're never going to be able to do it. And then they're doing this amazing mental math and solving these really challenging word problems. And it's really cool to see, you know, that rigor applied to all different types of learners. And, you know, I also... To just to throw in there, with the Math with Purpose video library, we I do provide videos for all those challenging problems too. And I've heard from parents all over the world, we were able to solve that problem because we had the visuals, the questioning, you walk through that problem in a way because some of those are hard yeah. <laughs> and it's important for us to get that support. And I really do believe that primary math is providing an option for every single learner to be successful. Very good. Well, this has been wonderful. Thank you so much, Jessica. Again, I know this is going to help a lot of homeschoolers who are using this curriculum, and we just appreciate your time this morning. So, and hopefully we'll have you again. With yeah, thank you questions. so much for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. <laughs>